English Conversations at the Workplace Episode 1 Newbie at Work Hello everyone! I'm Lisa Winson. I'm 17 years old and it's nice to meet all of you. Currently, I'm a temporary staff at the Winson Agency. Yeah, I'm still a high school student and I'm working for my father's company to earn myself some pocket money. My father owns a small travel agency and that's his legacy. Well, you know, it's very difficult to be a teen without financial independence. And it's even harder to work at your own father's company. Psst. This is going to be a little spoiler alert from me, guys. From a high schooler's point of view like mine, I see that there are a lot of weird but funny stories happening in the workplace. Do you work or study now? For those who have joined the working life, I'm sure you can totally relate. Workplaces are such interesting places on earth. Now, let's begin the story at the Winson Travel Agency and meet one of a kind colleagues with me. The story will start in three, two, one. Enjoy! Good morning, ladies. Morning, morning boss. boss. Morning, sweetie pie. Dad, don't call me like that here. I'm trying to be professional. All right, all right. Gotcha. No more sweetie pie. Because you're a cucumber. Oh, come on, Dad. Not that old school joke again. Did anyone get it? Get it? Because you're as cool as a cucumber. What? I thought it was so funny. It was not, boss. Okay, but by the way, what are you ladies watching? Oh, it's nothing. Just a Spanish singer. You wouldn't know him. I probably don't know him, but I know that we should change into a glue business. Because your eyes are glued on the screen. Ha <laughs> This joke wasn't funny either. Hi guys. Hello boss. Oh, is that Lorenzo Gratillo? He is such a hoot. Wait, you know that young man too? Of course, boss. Spanish singers are very famous in our country now. Yeah, I wish I could date a Spanish guy. Yeah, Spanish people are the best. So, you said you're Spanish, Jacob? Yes, I am, sir. Everyone, let's welcome our new staff, Jacob from Spain. <gasps> what did you say, Dad? Jacob is Spanish. Guess who is the greatest boss in the world now? Oh my goodness! Look at that handsome guy. I'm Ellen. Nice to meet you, Ellen. What... what's your name? He's Jacob from Spain. I'm Jacob Martinez. Hi, Mr. Martini. My name is Tracy, but you can call me Tracy Marcelina Finch. It's Martinez. 
I'm glad to meet you, Miss Finch. Oh, he's glad to see me. You can call me Miss Gilmer. Yes, I will. Oh, come on, girls. Your chins are dropping to the floor now. Save some face for yourself, sisters. Oh, her name is Lisa. She's my adorable daughter. Ugh, Dad! Are you trying to embarrass me in front of every new employee of yours, right? Ain't you? That's my girl, as sharp as her mother. Anyway, what's up, Jacob? Welcome to Winston Company. Great to meet you, Lisa. You have a very Spanish name. I'm Lisa, with the S. Yeah, Lisa. I already feel like I'm at home now. Whatever. Thank you all. Home? Good. We're a Spanish agency now. But that's not everyone. We still have... Hi, I'm Simon, the fix-it-all guy of Winston Company. Hi, man. I'm Jacob Martinez. You must be our new tour operation staff. Do you know where Jacob comes from? He's from Spain. Hi, Tracy. Uh, boss said that you could help me with filling in the information for the company personnel data. Ah, uh, yes, of course I can do that. You know, it's within my power. What's within your power? Eating four extra large pizzas in a row? That's our secret. Mr. Martinez, don't mind her. Ellen is always mumbling under stress. Please, don't be a stranger to me. You can call me Jacob. Ah, uh, yes, Jacob. Shall we start? As you wish, Tracy. Name? Jacob Martinez. How do you spell your surname? It's M-A-R-T-I-N-E-Z. Oh my goodness! Does anyone find his spelling so sexy or is it just me? Tracy, Tracy! Oh yes, M-A-R-T-I-N-E-Z. I got that. Occupation or position? Tour operation staff. Nationality? Spanish. Next is age. Do you mind if I ask how old you are? No biggie. I'm 26. Oh my god! We're the same age! Me too! We should hang out sometimes! Um, by saying a hangout, I meant a small get-together. And by sometimes, I meant today. Uh, excuse me, but my English is not so good. Can you explain that again? I think what Ellen wants to say. Today, we're having a small get-together for everyone in the company to welcome you after work. Oh, I see. That sounds great. You are all so nice to me. You're so welcome, Jacob Martinez. This is the last and most important question. Are you single, married, or with kids? I'm still available, ladies, with no kids. Yes, I told you. Jackpot. Excuse me? 
Oh, no, it's nothing. We meant we used to have a staff whose name is Jack Pot. You look so much like him, but more handsome. Yeah, more handsome. The most handsome guy in this office. Thank you, ladies. Man, you tell if this is the truth or not. Does everyone in Spain know how to dance and play football? Don't be ridiculous, Simon. Oh, speaking of dancing, yes. I think the dancing gene runs in our blood. See, it's the truth. How about playing the king sport? I'm afraid that not every Spanish knows how to play football. Even though we're madly in love with it. Yeah, tell me more. My turn to ask now, Simon. If I'm not wrong, you can dance, can't you? <laughs> yes, Ellen. Everyone in Spain can dance. I used to be a dancer, so I can do a lot of dances. But what kind of dances? Oh, oh, I can do the robot and moonwalk dance. Look at my robotic moonwalk. Oh, my eyes! You owe our eyes an apology, Tracy. Um, very creative, Tracy. Uh, why don't we all stand up and I can show you some of my signature dances. Yeah, yeah let's, let's dance! dance. Hi! Welcome back, everyone! How are you doing now? You must still remember me. I'm Lisa, and I'm here to tell you funny stories about my workplace. We're all employees of Winston Travel Agency, which is taken helm by my father, Mr. Boss. He's widely known by the nickname Laughter Bomb. I know you're confused by the nickname. But friends, that he's got the name is not because of his humor. In fact, my dad's joke making skills are so terrible. But I still love him anyway. Next, we have Jacob, the Spanish dancing machine. In the previous episode, Jacob had moved into our company and we threw him a welcome party. Everything was such a blast. We also have Tracy, the clumsy princess. Simon, the fix-it-all guy. And the star of today's episode, Ellen, the diet queen. Are you curious how Ellen got that nickname? Let's tune in and enjoy. something to ask. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Are you about to get married? Of course not. Sounds like a secret. Oh, I love secrets. It's not about getting married or revealing secrets, girls. How do I look? 
like a woman who is about to tie the knot with an old man. Ugh! I can't stand you! You look just fine, Ellen. Just fine? Did I say it wrong? You look gorgeous. Don't lie to me. I just gained some weight and now I'm as bloated as a balloon. Yeah, that's exactly what I was trying to say. Stop making fun of her, Lisa. Ellen is really in distress. Are you? Are you? I'm here. Who is my damsel? It's not funny, Simon. I'm a hero, and I heard there was a damsel in distress. What's not funny about that? Everyone in this office started acting like my dad. Who oh, called me? <gasps> we didn't! All right, all right. Chill, boys and girls. What's going on here? Ellen is sad because she's fat. Wait, fat? I can't believe I called you my friend. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say fat. Chubby? Obsessed? Big? Oh, I've waited for this moment the whole day. But you've eaten two tacos and one hot dog, man. When I first came to America, I learned there is nothing better than a free lunch. Lisa, can I have a slice of sandwich? Yeah, unless you promise to bring your own lunch boxes tomorrow. We promise. Jacob, I brought spaghetti. Do you want to eat with me? That spaghetti looks tasty. Can I have some too? Uh, no, it's just enough for me and Jacob. What do you have in your lunchbox, Ellen? This is the only thing that I will eat from now on. <gasps> That's all? Yep. What do you mean? She's eating like a herbivore. Since there were some people saying that I was out of shape, I'm gonna go on a diet. Hmm, but that looks like very plain and poor nutrition, Ellen. Yeah, you're not overweight at all. Guys, don't try to psych me out. By the way, you should all eat like me. Your health will thank you later. Oh, well, if you already made up your mind, set it on. I surely will. Today's menu is spicy chicken wrap. I have a lettuce and tomato salad. England flavor, fish and chips. Salad too. Avocado egg salad sandwich. Still salad. Jacket potato with filling. Still salad with some mayo. Peanut butter, pickle and potato chip sandwich. Salad. Thursday. day. Salad again. You've eaten salad for the whole week. Don't you get sick of it? It might taste boring, but 
It will improve my health and help me lose fat. That's the most important thing, Lisa. Tomorrow is Sunday. Want to discover Turkish cuisine with me, guys? I'm in. I heard that Turkish food is so rich in oil. I can't go. It's okay to have a cheat day, Ellen. Don't be so harsh on yourself. Plus, you did look different. Hmm, is that so? Is it because my face looks smaller? No, your face size stays the same. But you look truly like a zombie now. I refuse to hear those ridiculous things. Ellen, you are stressing yourself out over losing this weight stuff. What stuff? I don't have any ideas about what you are all saying. When you turn on the music and start doing exercises in our office. I thought it was a nice idea at first. You know, free music and dance moves are two things that I'm into. But hearing our same songs over and over, from this day to another, made me go insane. Yeah, you know how long it took me to finish my card castle? Oh, Ellen and her intense jumping exercises ruined everything. My card castle, my empire. Okay, man, we've understood. Everything will be okay. Sorry, I didn't know my exercises caused you so many troubles like that. It didn't only bring us inconvenience, Helen. You burnt your shirts while waking up early preparing your boring salad. You slept during our staff meeting. I'm sorry, boss. It's okay, I understand. When my wife was on a diet, she slept during the family meals. You know, just in order to not see the food. She's afraid to lose her control seeing the delicious food that I cooked. But how is she now? Did she succeed in losing weight? No, she didn't. She sneakily ate while we were asleep. <gasps> well, no wonder. That's fair. In Spain, we said you can't go against your destiny. In this case, it must be eating. All right, I get it. I crossed the line a bit too far with all of this. Yeah, let's eat cleaner instead. Doing exercise with the right amount of intensity in the right place at the right time, too. Believe me, in men's eyes, it doesn't matter how a girl looks or what dress she wears. Those things don't make a girl beautiful. Girls, remember that you're beautiful when you're healthy and confident. Second that. Aww. Yeah, now I know I'm beautiful. We all are. So, I guess everything is solved now? Let's meet up for a Turkish food tour at the weekend. Hooray! Buying a house. Let's watch the following video to learn about the process of buying a house. Dialogue 1. Meeting the broker. Good morning, Mr. Pine. I'm John from Lennon Properties. 
We talked on the phone yesterday. Ah, yes, hello. Please call me Paul. Thanks for taking the time to meet with me. You're welcome. So, how can I help you, Paul? My wife and I decided to move to Boston at the end of September, so we're looking for a house in the area. Boston is a wonderful place. I'm sure your family will love it here. Thanks, I hope so too. What type of place are you looking for? We are a family of three with a five-year-old boy, so we want to find a kid-friendly place in Beacon Hill or the surrounding areas. Okay, I've noted that down. I suppose you're looking for a three-bedroom house? Yes, ideally. We want to find a furnished three-bed, two-bath house, but we're also open to other options. How much are you willing to pay? Around $600,000 to $650,000. The highest price I can afford is $700,000. Thank you for providing the info. I'll let you know as soon as I find something. Great, thanks so much. Dialogue 2. Financial Situation Hey, Paul, it's Harry. Hey, Linda just told me that you guys are moving to Boston. Yes, we're finding a house in Boston Hill. I was just about to call and tell you. That's terrific news. We'll be neighbors soon. I know, right? How exciting. How is the house search? Do you need any help? I don't know the area very well, so I asked a real estate agent to find a place for us. I'm a bit worried about the financing stuff, though, because houses in Boston seem pretty pricey. Do you think that will be a problem for me? How's your financial situation, if you don't mind me asking? Not at all. I really need your insights. I think my financial situation is okay. My new job will pay me better than my current position, and recently I invested in stocks and made some money from them. Well, I think you're in a good place. You think so? Yeah, you may still need to get a mortgage, but with your income right now, there should be nothing to worry about. Oh yeah? I'm glad I asked you. Thanks, Harry. No problem. Let me know if there's anything I can help you with. Dialogue 3. Schedule a showing. Hi, Paul. It's John from London Properties. Hi, John. How's it going? Great news. I found two houses that fit your criteria. That's great. Would you like to schedule a showing? Yes, please. My wife and I will visit both places. Is this Sunday morning a good time for you? Say, 9 a.m. That's perfect. Great. I'll text you the addresses. Please call me when you get there. We will. Thanks, John. Dialogue 4. The First House Wow! This place is amazing! Everything looks new. Yeah, this house is recently renovated. The furniture is all new. Uh-huh. We love the decor as well. What amenities does this place have? The house has air conditioners and central heating. There are an oven and a dishwasher in the kitchen. The washer and dryer are down in the basement. Look, honey. There's also a backyard where Pete can play. We can also make a garden there to grow flowers and veggies as you've always wanted to. Sounds great, honey. I'm in love with this place. We're very happy with this place. What price is the landlord asking, John? He's asking for $740,000. Hmm. We like this house a lot, but we're afraid that's out of our budget, so we can't decide right now. Let's go see the second house. Dialogue 5. The Second House Thank you. 
This house is not as big as the last one we just saw, but the price is within your budget. It's only $630,000. The price isn't too bad, but this house is much smaller than we expected. The furniture is also not as new as what we saw in the photos. The furniture only needs some cleanup. You should consider the fact that this house is in a very nice and safe neighborhood. There are also supermarkets and schools nearby. We really like the neighborhood, but honestly, this house is not quite what we're looking for. Oh, okay. I completely understand. Do you want me to keep looking for other options? Dialogue 6. Making a Decision Actually, we still have our minds set on the first house. Could you maybe help us negotiate the price with the landlord? Certainly. I'll do my best to help you. What price is good for you? I told you before that my wife and I didn't want to spend over $700,000, but... We really like that house, so we are willing to pay a bit more. Could you help us negotiate down to $710,000? I'll ask the landlord and see what he says. I'll let you know by this Friday. Thank you, John. I hope to hear from you soon. Dialogue 7. Negotiation Hi, John. So, what did the landlord say? Well, I explained your situation to him and tried to negotiate with him. But, unfortunately, he told me that he couldn't reduce the price to $710,000. Oh. He could only lower the price from 740000 to 730000 Would that work for you? That'd still be difficult for me. I have to get a mortgage, and the highest I could pay is 720000 Okay, I see. I'll talk to the landlord again. Dialogue 8. The Decision Hi, John. How are you? I'm good, thanks. What about you? I'm also fine. Um, so, did you get to talk to the landlord? Yes, I did. The good news is he finally agreed with your proposed price. He will reduce the price to 720000 with the condition that you'll have to pay your own money. If you want to redecorate or make any changes to the house. That should be no problem. We're fine with that condition. The house is in good shape, so we probably won't need to fix a lot. Great! I'm glad we're able to work that out. Dialogue 9. Signing Papers Good morning, Paul. Hi, John. How's it going? Everything's good. I just want to call you to come here and let you know that I've already prepared a housing contract for you and the landlord. Do you have time this Saturday? Let's meet to sign the papers. I'm glad to hear that. Can we meet on Saturday afternoon, around 3 p.m.? Yeah, that will work. Right. I have a question. What's that? What documents do I need to bring? I will bring your contract of sale... Please bring along $5,000 for deposit. Remember to also bring your income statement and bank statements so that we can start applying for a home loan. Okay, I will. That should be all. I'll text you all the requirements again. You should have no issues. Great. Thanks so much for making this process much easier, John. You're very welcome, Paul. It's my job. I really appreciate your help.
Hey, are you guys free this Sunday? Yes, I think so. Nothing is planned as far as I know. Me too. What is up? Do you guys want to join me on a camping trip? I've been wanting to go camping for a while now, but my friend told me I should try it sometimes. Sounds interesting. I actually have never gone camping either. Have you? Me? Yes, I have. Quite a few times with my family, actually. My parents used to love camping so much that we went almost every month when I was 14. My dad even rented a camping car once. Wow, really? I guess your parents really enjoyed it. How was it for you? Did you enjoy it? Have you been going recently? Yes, I loved it. We sometimes camped with other families as well, so it was even more fun. I haven't been able to go this year though because I was too busy. I will probably go with my family soon. I think I can join this Sunday too. Great. Hearing you say that makes me really excited to try it. How about you, Chris? Yes, I will come with you guys too. I'm glad we have an experienced person like Mary with us on our first time camping. Do you guys think we should invite others to come with us? Yes, definitely. The more the merrier. Who do you have in mind? Should we ask Brian? He once told me that he went camping with his friends back in college. Great idea. He seems free these days too. Brian? I thought about asking him too, but perhaps he won't be able to come this Sunday. He told me the other day he was having a family gathering this Saturday at his parents' house. Which is three hours from here. Is he staying there for the whole weekend? I'm not sure when he's coming back, but chances are he won't make it back here in time for our trip. All right, then. How about Jane? I'll meet up with her later today so I can ask her if you guys agree. Sure. Let us know if she joins. Wait, have you checked the weather this weekend? Not really, but it looks like it's going to be sunny since it's sunny the whole week and last. Yeah, hopefully. Just be optimistic, guys. Hi, Lucy. Sorry I'm a bit late. I had to stay after class for an hour for a group meeting. Hey, Adam. It's okay. I came a little late as well, so I haven't been waiting for too long. You had to stay behind for a meeting? On the first day of class? Right. That's what I thought, too. I can't believe we already have work to do in the first class. Which class is that? Who is the professor? It's Marketing 101. I chose that class because I thought it would be kind of fun, but oh, am I wrong. And Professor Walden is teaching the class. Chris Walden. Oh, no. Yes, I know. He's known to be strict and give a lot of homework. But I didn't know that until recently. But I guess it's too late to change my mind now. I took his class last year too. Not marketing though. It actually wasn't that bad, but he did give a lot of homework. He's pretty strict with grades, but I think if you attend class regularly, you'll be fine. Yeah, hopefully. I don't know yet, but I think this class is going to be my least favorite class of the semester. We'll see. You'll be fine. <laughs> what courses are you taking this semester? Only four. I'm taking marketing, economics, psychology, and a writing course. You? I'm taking five. Economics, finance, business, international relations, and a math class. I'm thinking about dropping the business class, though. Why? Is it hard? 
It's a little more difficult than I thought, and the professor is really strict too. It looks like he's a new professor. I've never seen him at school before. Is he old? No, he's honestly the youngest professor I've ever met at school. I thought he wouldn't be strict because he's young, but I guess not. It's all right. You still have time to drop the class and maybe find another one to fill in. <gasps> Wait, I just realized. Have you ordered? You've been here for fifteen minutes and still haven't ordered anything. Oh, I forgot. It seems like the waitress also forgot about me. Let me just go get her now. I got too carried away. <laughs>
Agreed. The last time I tried Asian food here, it was also delicious, too. Really? I'll try it next time. Mia, have you ever been abroad? Yes, actually, I was born abroad. <gasps> oh, really? Just now I know. Where were you born? I was born in Japan. Wow, are you kidding me? So far away. For real, I was made in Japan. <laughs> so, can you speak Japanese? I can't. My family left Japan when I was too young. How old were you back then? Nine. Nine years old and you still can't speak any Japanese? No, no. Nine months old. Oh, that's why. Then... Have you ever been to another country? Well, actually, after leaving Japan, my family moved to the United Kingdom. Haha, <laughs> are you kidding me? For real, when I was 14 years old, my family moved to America for my father's job. Oh, now that I think about it, I sometimes hear your British accent. Haha, <laughs> that's right. But it's less and less after I spent years in the U.S. So tell me about life in the U.K. How is it there? Is it different from here? What do you want to know? Weather, landscape, or the people? Weather first. I heard it rains a lot in the U.K., right? More than other countries in Europe, I think. But where I live, it's usually sunny in the summer. How about the houses and buildings? Most of the architecture is very ancient, which gives you a nostalgic feeling. And British people? Uh, British people are well known to be extremely polite. You will hear thank you or sorry all day there. <laughs> Yeah, I heard about that too. So what is the thing you love most in the UK? I really love the peaceful atmosphere there. I think British people love the silence too. They don't talk loudly in public spaces. Well, that sounds like a totally different life to me. Maybe because I lived in a small town? Life is busy, too, in London or bigger cities, I think. Yeah, so have you ever been to other countries in Europe? Yes, of course. I went on a trip to Europe every summer with my parents. <gasps> Where have you been to? In many countries, though. It'll take too long to name them all. That's so cool. Two years ago, my family and I also traveled to Europe in the summer. I really, really loved it. What countries have you been to? Only two weeks, so we went to France, Switzerland, Italy, and Spain. What is your favorite place? In terms of natural scenery, Switzerland is number one. Yeah. I love the green color of grass filled in the summer. Where did you go to Switzerland? We went to Lauterbrunnen and visited some famous lakes. Those places were breathtaking. How about Italy? Where did you visit? We went to Venice and Rome. Yeah, Venice is a must. The city by the river looks really unique, in my opinion. For me, my favorite place there is Burano Island with colorful houses. It looks so artful. To be honest with you, mentioning Italy firstly reminds me of gelato. For real, that ice cream is super delicious. And for France, which cities did you visit? I went to Paris and some cities in the south coast of France. 
Where do you prefer, Paris or the southern cities? I actually prefer the south of France to Paris. I love looking at the blue Mediterranean Sea. So do I. Paris is also beautiful, but maybe we are more of a natural person. We have so many things in common, Mia. How about Barcelona? What still stays inside your mind until now? <laughs> to be honest with you, it's the seafood in Barcelona. And you? For me, it's sangria and 40 degrees Celsius heat in Madrid. <gasps> 40 degrees? Seriously? Yes, 40 degrees that day. I'll never forget. That's crazy hot. But didn't you go to Barcelona? Yes, I did. It's an extremely beautiful city. I like the port and beach. How about the food? Yeah, seafood paella and churros are my favorite. <laughs> I think we can travel together on a food tour. We are such perfect travel partners. Sure, we have to. Let's travel somewhere far away next time. How about Japan, where I was made? Let's go. I want to explore Japan too. I heard they have many delicious foods there. Its culture and architecture are also very unique too. A mentioning of the, about the food, I think we should visit Southeast Asia also. <laughs> Absolutely. The food there is extremely delicious. Have you tried them? Not many. Just Vietnamese pho and some Thai dishes. But I watched a lot of food travelers on YouTube. Nice. I'm starting to feel so eager now. Where have you been all my life? Finally, I found my travel mate. Talking about all these really makes me crave traveling. Right? Do you have a hobby to collect souvenirs? Yeah, I bought a lot of souvenirs. Mainly postcards and fridge magnets from all the places I went. Wow, you must have a big collection now. Is there any place you like but you haven't been to? I can give you some souvenirs as a gift. Thank you, you're so nice. Then... Budapest, have you been there? Yeah, sure. Why do you like the city? Once I saw a photo on Instagram of Budapest at night. It's spectacular. Oh yeah, at night lights from the buildings on both sides of the river are turned on so brightly. Stunning. I will go there one day. Oh no, I didn't notice lunch break is almost over. Let's finish the meal first. Okay, let's focus. 